Okay, everyone, thank you for joining us. We are going to get started. Again, my name is Blanca Romero. I'm with Naleo Educational Fund. Today I'm wearing um, my Aste Contar t-shirt that was um, given by Telemundo, one of our partners. So if you can please introduce yourself in the chat box. Thank you everybody for joining us. Um, today, I believe we're gonna have a small turnout perhaps. Um, this was one of the workshops where we had a little bit less RSVPs than the other ones. Um, but without further ado, we're gonna go get ahead, ahead and get started um, because I have a lot of information to share with you today. And so I'm really excited to be able to help, um, to be able to share some of the information that I have um, learned throughout my work experience as a digital marketeer. So this workshop will be a continuation of the digital marketing workshop where we're gonna talk a little bit more about reputation. So again, just as a reminder, if you have any questions or to stay up to date, you can text census to 977. 97779. And thank you for everyone who's joining us. Renee, Teresa, Fernando, um, Anna, Susan, Fernando. Thank you, everybody from Black Women's Health Project. Thank you for joining us. Awesome. So <clears throat> I have a lot of information for you. Um, feel free to chat any questions or any comments. Um, if you want to share about how you're feeling, go ahead. This is the chat is the perfect place to share um, how you're feeling today. I hope that little um, song, that little tune was a little bit helpful and that the audio was okay. <clears throat> so again, Naleo Educational Fund, we're a nonprofit organization established in 1981. Uh, we promote and facilitate the participation of Latinos in the American political process from citizenship to public service and to also making sure we are counted. And again, self-response continue continues to be the best way to respond online to my2020census.gov. Uh, um, do we have Roberto Garcia on the line with any census updates? Hi, good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Uh, my name is Roberto Garcia. I'm a representative with the U.S. Census Bureau. Uh, nothing much to report as of today. Um, I just want to here reiterate that we will be restarting our field operations starting in June. Uh, however, it is being phased out uh, by county uh, and by state in some instances, uh, given the situation of the pandemic. Uh, in San Diego, uh, we're looking for a mid-June uh, start up, uh, meaning that we will start to do some field activities uh, such as update leave uh, and other census activities. Uh, but for now, uh, we are shifting our focus, um, given that the county uh, of San Diego has done a, a good job at responding. Uh, currently, we're at 65.5. Um, so we currently are looking at census tracts that are lower than 50% uh, so that we can make sure that people in those areas are participating. Uh, the other thing that I want to mention to folks is that when you're contacting your local partnership specialist, uh, please uh, be cognizant that depending on where they are, uh, they may have uh, different limitations uh, that might prevent them from doing their job. Uh, so please be patient with us. Uh, we're all in this uh, together, right, trying to um, make sure that everyone in our community is counted. Um, so we will continue to do outreach in the best way that we can, uh, whether it be through virtual uh, meetings. Uh, we're also partnering with food pantries to distribute materials. Uh, but as of today, uh, I just want to say that the focus of the U.S. Census Bureau, specifically in San Diego County, is to 
engage those tracks that are below 50% participation. Thank you, Blanca. Great, perfect. Um, thank you, Roberto. Thank you for the census update. Um, and again, once I send out the follow-up email, you will have the online link to the Census Bureau schedule. Uh, otherwise, you can go to um, um, the uscensus.gov website. Um, for everyone who joined us, please thank you for uh, introducing yourself. Um, it's very nice to see all of you. And uh, it looks like we have critical mass, so that's great. So um, I know some of you are not from the San Diego region, but I want to continue to what Roberto said. Um, here in San Diego, we want to focus on reaching those census tracts that are less than 50% um, self-response rate. If you go to the census hard account maps 2020.us, you will find there, um, and, and if you need help, uh, you can email me and I can coach you through the process. Um, you will find some of the features uh, one feature in specific, it allows you to select it and it highlights in purple. Um, the bottom 20% self-response 2020 census rates nationwide. So if you're in the Bay Area, in the um, Central Valley, um, or down here in the South Bay, um, you can click on that link and it can show you if there are census tracts within your regions that are at the bottom 20%. So here, uh, specifically in my community, and I actually live here, um, this is not one of my census tracts where I live, it's not highlighted, um, but it's right next to me. Um, I only live a few blocks away, um, but this is my community. This is where I grew up. Um, it's Grant Hill, Barrio Logan, and Logan Heights. And these are the communities that are primarily Latino. They happen to also be low income. If you look at the graph here, you can see the census tracts. In this specific, in this particular um, slide, there are five different census tracts that are below 50% response. So you can see the track number. You can also see the you can also see the response rate. So on the first row, you will see a response rate. Then you will see the percentage of people who are uh, Hispanic. You will also see the, so these are in percentages, you also see the percentage of poverty, and you will see the percentage of those additionally near poverty. And then for this, these specific census tracts, um, I listed the immigrant population because it was significantly higher than other census tracts. Um, so here in these specific uh, five tracts, uh, they have anywhere from 83 to 88% Hispanic population. Um, if you look at the poverty rate, for example, for the one of the first tracks, we have a 34% of the population living in poverty, as well as 32 near poverty. So if you add it up, we have 66% of the population living near in poverty or near poverty. And these are 85% Hispanic population, of which those 38% are immigrants. And according to the Census Bureau um, data, the immigrants are people who arrived um, into the United States as of 2010. Um, that is what I believe is the data that I uh, gathered. If you, once you get the slides, you can click on the view map and it'll take you to the census, um, hard account maps. You, the response rates are as of 520. And these are, uh, this is not Rome, this is from the census hard account maps, um, which is an, an integration of the census, um, uh, the census for self response rates with the help of the um, University of New York. Um, that is the census hard account maps. Um, so, here, here are the bar, the Barrio Logan, and this is just an example. I haven't done, um, I don't have slides for Imperial County or other areas, but uh, again, like I said, the, um, here in San Diego, there are only there are only eight eight tracks. There are only eight census tracks um, in all of San Diego County. They're at the bottom 20% um, of the census rates nationwide. Um, okay, 
Great. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, additionally, the, these are uh, five census tracts. However, the estimated population is about is 19,528. Um, within this little area, there's also an estimated uh, 2,963, so almost 3,000 households. Um, so if the response rate is about is less than 50, that means only about 1,500 households have responded to the census uh, questionnaire. So I wanted to highlight this because, um, like Roberto said, our, our counties are doing great, um, which we knew that, but the hard account communities are these ones in Barrio Logan. This is the historical, I mean, it's called Barrio Logan and Logan Heights and Grand Hill. This is historically um, the Latino census tracts. And as you can see, I listed the poverty um, rates because I thought those were, um, I, I thought those were important statistics. Um, to follow up, we also have uh, VISTA. So these are the other two um, census tract self-response rates. Um, there is one other one in National City, but I did not include that in this slide. So again, in these little two tracks, the estimated population is um, 9,600, with an estimated households of about 2,200. And so um, the, you can't see it here because I wanted to highlight specifically the census track and the community for those communities that do live there. But when you look at the map, um, you see everything around it uh, blue, which is the self-response rate in blue. Um, and so this, these ones turn, turn into yellow as low self-response. You can't see it here because, again, I changed the color. Um, but once you look at it at the census, uh, in the census hard account maps, you will see more um, the contrast of other communities that are being counted, but not ours. Um, so let's get started now moving forward um, with uh, today's workshop, which is the digital marketing, um, sorry, the reputation marketing. So in April, we had our digital marketing uh, workshop. So um, just to kind of touch base, what do you remember from that? What is digital marketing? If you can put it in the chat box, just to test your memory, see if you were paying attention. Um, and if you weren't here, uh, that's okay. So again, feel free to chat in the box. What is digital marketing? So if you recall uh, from our last um, training in April, uh, marketing via the web or social media is what I'm getting into the, in the comments. <clears throat> Emails, marketing through social media and sites like LinkedIn, virtual platforms to promote branding. It includes online, yes. Thank you. So here's just a refresher from what we learned um, about a month ago that digital marketing, right, is the component of marketing that utilizes internet and online-based digital technologies such as desktop computers, mobile phones, and other digital media and platforms to promote products and services. So yes, thank you everybody who responded to the chat. Um, you're correct. And this is just a general definition. I like to start with general definitions because that helps us get through the subjects um, that we are going to be learning about. So um, are you looking to improve your brand's image? Um, are you looking to improve your brand's image? That's essentially what reputation marketing is. It is your image. Hi, Sarah. It is your image. It is your reputation. So are you, do you need that as a trusted messenger, as an organization, as a business? Um, is it important to have a good brand image? And that's exactly what reputation marketing is. So reputation marketing has evolved, um, and this is what we covered also last month a little bit. It has evolved from reputation management, brand marketing, uh, reputation management, brand marketing, uh, in which the vetting, so the vetting has turned from word of mouth. So now we're talking about businesses, we're talking about reputation, we're talking about marketing. Um, as we do this census work, uh, we knew that talking to people face-to-face, -face, over the phone, um, word of mouth, we know that that is very powerful. However, 
this word of mouth gets translated into the digital platform very easily. Uh, and this has been due to all of the digital uh, mar marketing that we've been doing. So a brand's reputation is vetted online in real time by consumers. And you probably all know that. If you're looking for a good place to eat, um, you go to Yelp and you try and find those reviews and what they say. If you're looking for a new project, uh, a new product, a new service, um, some of you are looking into those reviews. I know I'm one of those who looks at every review. Even if it's a low review, I want to read the comments because maybe it's not the maybe the review is not about the company, um, but it is about the customer's experience. So I I need to know if this review is real or not. So a lot of us do read uh, reviews. Um, if we hear something bad about an organization, we take that into account. So essentially, your reputation are online reviews citing experiences on social networking sites. So the online reviews are about the experiences that get cited on the social, on the social networking sites. Um, and these are not just online reviews. This can also be um, employee reviews, employee feedback. Um, also, now with all the COVID, um, we have social responsibility. So a lot of organizations are right now being socially responsible. This is not just the government or for-profit businesses, technology businesses. These are also our nonprofit organizations in that they understand that we are very valuable. Um, so if you, um, so, so it's not just online reviews, it's just in general, it's feedback. So what are some of your experiences um, or ideas that you've had? Why do you think reputation is important for census work? Why, why am I talking about this? Why, why is your reputation important for doing this census work? Please put it in the chat box. I'm going to wait a little bit to see what people say. And thank you, everybody who's joined us additionally. You will also receive the online, uh, the slides online and the links to different resources are on there as well. Um, Sarah, thank you, Sarah. If you have a good reputation, you become trustworthy. Yes, perfect. Anna, bad reviews can lead to non-response, exactly. And I don't want to just say that these are online reviews, right? If we didn't have these reviews, um, the people that you are face to face over the phone, what would they think of you? This is the reputation. What would they think of you? So Liliana says, communities of color are distrustful of the government. So having a good reputation helps you gain that trust. Yes, that is true. Unfortunately, a lot of organizations don't have a good reputation online or sometimes, and it's not that we don't have a good reputation, we just haven't worked on our online presence. Um, we haven't really ramped up that uh, trustworthiness online. Um, some organizations do a really good job. Sometimes all they use are photographs to show like people being happy, to show perhaps food bank distribution, to show all of the great work. So photographs are a great way to show your reputation online. Um, and then Fernando says, because when the government makes good work, the people count. Thank you. So yes, yeah, so, um, so I wanted to ask this question uh, so that you know why we're talking about reputation and why this can help. And these are all techniques, um, right? You can use, take, leave it, use the ones that you have. But again, like I said, I worked with a digital marketing organization here uh, in San Diego, in downtown San Diego. Um, as, and as a digital marketeer, uh, focusing on your reputation online was very important. And so we had a lot of clients from the real estate, um, uh, the real estate business, for example, from Australia and New Zealand. Um, so, you know, this is this I have seen it work. And so just consistent with the Naleo uh, border engagement that we've done uh, in 2018, we gathered, um, we did some research. We did, we took, we did some research so that we could apply it to the 2020 census 
and learn about the messengers. So of course, like you said, reputation, right? So family members are the trusted messengers. Um, we also have nurses, doctors, Latino organizations, people who speak for the children. So if you're trying to go, um, you're, if you're trying to go into a hospital and you see a bad review, I might not go there. Or if you see an organization and you see a bad review, I might, again, I might not have a response. So what is your customer's experience like? I want you to think about who your customers are. Um, if you're an organization, who are those clients? If you are the US Census Bureau, who are your clients? Who are your customers? Tell me who your customers are in the chat box. And what do you think is your experience? Thank you, Sarah. The community, says Sandra. So the community are your clients, great. So Sandra, when you say the community, are you talking about everyone in general? Are you talking about residents? Are you talking about uh, organizational leaders? So Sarah says, a uh, Muslim American, Middle Eastern community. My people are Hispanics. Great. Black and brown community members. Uh, so I have a, here an interesting uh, comment that my customers are individuals who might not be too civically engaged. The goal is for them to have a positive experience taking the census. People are trying to make themselves count. Great. Awesome. Thank you. So I ask that because, for example, me as N Naleo Educational Fund, uh, my job, my mission is to make sure that um, stakeholders working on the census have the, create, the correct educational materials that they need. Um, so these are stakeholders for the census. I want to make sure that you have the correct information, the correct timeline. And sometimes that means making sure that Census Bureau staff knows that correct information as well. So my customers are Census Bureau staff members, community organizations, residents, because I am working to educate about the census. Great, so thank you for sharing. So I wanna talk about feedback again, and that feedback, and this is a quote from my uh, one of my human uh, resource uh, teachers here from UCSD Extension, um, and that feedback is the new black. I really like how she said it. Feedback is the new black. So this is feedback from your customers, feedback um, from your employees, feedback from your stakeholders, from your partners. So if you're having a hard time working with your partners, if you're having um, challenges working with other organizations, it might be time to get some feedback. So if you're having challenges, feedback is the new black. And so we're talking about trustworthiness, but sometimes this trust is from faceless individuals. And as, I, as we learn in the digital marketing world, it goes a long way. Um, here is one of the reviews that we looked at last time from Miguel Martinez, where it says, great place to get citizenship application assistance. So um, like someone mentioned in the chat box, uh, we need to be trustworthy. If you're an organization, if you're working with people of color, um, we need to have that trustworthiness, right? So here in this place, it says, great place to get citizenship application. One of the important things that the reviews do is not only do they, do they make us look good online, um, they also help boost um, our ratings when people search for us on the Google Maps or other maps. Um, and then also it uses keywords that talk about organization, like this is a great place to get citizenship application assistance. So um, keywords like citizenship assistance are coming up, etc. And if you recall from last time, uh, this particular review within this organization only had six reviews and we had a rating of 4.0. So I want to go on a tangent a little bit for now. 
um, and talk about um, how this all relates. So news and information sources and platforms for 2020 census. So again, this is from the 2018 research that Naleo Educational Fund did, um, the research on messaging. So what we found is that people who speak Spanish only, so for Spanish speakers only, and this might also be for um, other communities that speak other languages only. So for, this is basically non-English speakers. So for Spanish speakers, the Spanish language media was a, a trusted source of information. Now, the younger participants of this research had a more favorable view of social media as a source of information. So Spanish speakers only, they trust the media. Younger participants see social media as a, as a source of information, more a little bit more favorable. Now, 85%, so in our research, we found that 85% of the participants, and these were all both through surveys and through focus groups, and you will have the link if you wanna read the methodology um, and, and, and further um, details of the, of the research. Um, it's, it's, it will be later on the link. So 85% of survey participants were regularly, in this case daily, online via smartphones. So this is telling us that people are on their smartphone all the time, every day. And this will um, keep that in mind because this is why we're doing this, that people are looking you up online. People are searching for information online via their smartphones. And that's why I wanted to do this reputation marketing because it focuses on the use of smartphones and looking up information. Less than half said they use a laptop or desktop computer on a daily basis. So while less than 50% are using a computer, 85% are using a smartphone. What, what I found most interesting about this research and what is why this is more most important for what we're talking about here today is that survey participants frequently search online to get more information or to verify what they have heard on social media or the news. So what does this mean? If you have done this, you hear something, you know something, you look it up really quick. You go online and you look it up. If you get an email sometimes from an unknown sender, sometimes you go online and look it up to verify it's a legit legitimate uh, business. So basically our research says that participants go online for more information to verify what they have heard on social media or the news. So if you're an organization and you're telling your uh, clients or your customers something, um, they may not take your word for it. They're gonna go online and research that and see if what they find online backs you up. So this is where the reputation comes into, um, comes into hand uh, when we're doing all of this work. So again, I wanna, I wanna talk about a little bit more um, about this. So uh, for example, email and Facebook. So this is specifically email and Facebook were the most frequently used and they were used on a daily basis. So when we're trying to do this organizing, um, this digital shift, know that email and Facebook were most frequently used by the community that we survey. And in this case, again, you can look at the methodology and the different participants <clears throat> through the link later. However, Twitter was the least frequently used. More than half said they used it on a monthly basis, rarely or never. So I don't know how many of you use, how many of you use Twitter, but just as an example for our um, for our digital shift, I was most likely used. Facebook rather than Twitter, as an example. Um, so these are just some of uh, the findings that we found, and I thought they were very uh, interesting when it comes to the digital work that we're doing now and the reputation that we have online. So we have a reputation as a brand when we face our clients. We have a specific reputation. So 
What, I, I, what I'm arguing today is that that same reputation gets translated online. So if you can list one example, I wanna hear from you now. How do you ask your clients for feedback? So your customers, how, how do you know that what you're doing is working? How do you know that you did a good job on a workshop? How do you know uh, that the services that you're providing are actually making a difference? How do you know? How do we know? How does anyone know? So if you can list one example of how you ask your clients for feedback, how what are the different procedures that we um, that we can use to determine whether we're being successful or not? So I want to talk to the Census Bureau specifically, um, the staff of the Census Bureau there are online. If you are having challenges um, with your with partners, with stakeholders, um, how do you know? How, how do you know that what you're doing is not working? So Fernando says, I ask, you like my work in the 2020 census or do you like the 2020 census job? Great. So off the bat, asking, um, knowing feedback or getting feedback sometimes has to do with questions. So we want to ask. Um, we also have surveys. Surveys are a great way to get feedback. One of the things that I wanna say is feedback does not have to be formal. It can be informal. So a survey is somewhat of a formal way to receive feedback. Um, Fernando, um, if you ask just the question, do you like the census job? That's a little bit more informal. That's a little bit more of a check-in and that's perfectly fine. Um, so feedback can be questions, surveys. Um, sometimes people put, faces next to my Facebook post, says Susanna. Yes, that is feedback, right? If you get a happy face or a sad face. Um, so I wanna know why people put sad faces next to your Facebook posts, Susan. Um, but yeah, so this can also, so feedback, like I said, feedback is the new black, but it doesn't have to just be limited to um, the workforce, uh, we can also use feedback in school. And now that we are home a lot with either significant others um, or our children, uh, feedback can be very important in this moment because sometimes we think or we assume that we are doing what people want us to do or what people need, and that may be totally wrong. So within the business culture right now, um, a lot of companies, what they're doing now is that they're taking customer surveys. If you see, <clears throat> if you have experienced a rise in different organized, in different companies asking you for feedback, it's exactly because of that, because or, uh, businesses specifically and leading businesses, they want to know um, that they are providing the service you need. Uh, and so that it is data informed um, for you. So Isabel says that when a partner decides to share our information, it means it feels good with the information and the source. Thank you, Isabel, yes. So a partner decides to share it, that's also feedback, and they just don't share it. Um, I'm sure they say something like, hey, hey partners, this is a great resource that Isabel sent me or that Isabel from the Census Bureau sent me, right? So they're not just sharing it, they're adding comments to it that uh, back you up, or like you said, they are trustworthy of the information. Sandra says feedback should be asked while you're serving the client. Yes, so these are all excellent examples. So if you are, if you remember, um, again, the feedback can also be about awareness, right? You're trying to be aware of what's going on. Also, the clients are aware of what you're doing. And there's also an interest in an organization. Most importantly, like all of you said, it is exactly because we need to be trustworthy. And as we're doing the census work, we are the trusted messengers. Every single person that is talking about the community is a trusted messenger. Now, the level of trustworthiness that they, um, that they give, then that's, that's a different story, right? But, but for this census work, we all at least are making an effort to be trusted, to be trustworthy. 
So if you recall from our April training, we looked at this organization, Naleo Educational Fund, of course, and I talked about how we only have six reviews and we only have a 4.0 star. The 4.0 is not bad, but the level of reviews, the number six, it means, yeah, we've done research and everything, but we haven't really asked people for feedback. If somebody looks up Naleo Educational Fund, whereas this is all we had, we had six reviews, we had, I think, one picture, if you recall. What, what would you think? What would anybody think? So different, some of you mentioned different ways that you can get feedback or how you can get it. Um, reviews specifically or feedback, like you said, somebody put on your social media, somebody said, I get emojis on Facebook. Um, you can ask for feedback on LinkedIn. So feedback is a little bit more professional on LinkedIn, but this is just one example. You also have Facebook. So you mentioned Facebook emojis. Facebook also has reviews as well. People can post, like I mentioned, Yelp. And you also have Google. So you have the Google reviews. In this case, this example of the Naleo Educational Fund is a Google review. Then you also have website integration. So this is something that community organizations don't often do, but businesses are really good at doing. They embed their Google reviews on their website. So if they have a Google review that they like, um, they put it on their website. So when people go, those reviews are also there. Um, I honestly can't recall right now off the top of my head how to embed them, but that's like a whole nother subject that we will not go into. But I just wanna to touch upon on how uh, these are some of the things that companies are doing and um, rarely are organizations good at. I have yet to see, there are very limited organizations that I can say, um, how do we do this? What are we doing? And so I have a comment here that says social work is hard to measure. I want to say, I don't know if you mean social work as in like the social work that we're doing or like the social media work. Um, and it is hard to measure, but this is a way to measuring. Any social media work or online work that you do, I want to say that it is very easy to, to measure um, because you can see the links, you can see um, the comments, you can see what is going on. So again, this is the online reputation as of April 23, 2020. So if you recall, this is what we looked at on April 23, if you were present. We looked at Naleo Educational Fund. And we're not doing bad, but we're not doing great. And so this is almost like it, it, we're almost non-existent there. So now I wanna ask you, so I'm gonna, in the next few minutes, I'm gonna kinda do a little run through of how or what you would do to get some sort of feedback. Some of you do surveys, right? You do your surveys, but do you post that online? Do you say a um, hundred of our clients said this, uh, our services were, were great? Do you boast about it? So I wanna um, urge you to that if you're not already doing this, if you're not already sharing um, how socially responsible you are, that you start doing this because this is this will help you as you as you go through um, your census work with organizations, but also in the future for potential partners, in the future for potential funders, um, etc. And you know what? Word of mouth is very very important too. So if people are seeing this and reading this. They're also going to share that. So I want to know, for those of you who have been on these workshops, or if this is the first time today, I, and I want to know from all of you, or as many as can participate on a scale of one to 10, how useful have these Thursday workshops been? So 10 is the highest and one is the lowest. So, and this is in general, just the, one general rating from one to 10. How useful have these Thursday workshops been for you? So I want to see some numbers in the chat box. I see an eight, I see an eight, I see an eight. So 
One of the things that uh, someone here mentioned, I believe it was Sandra mentioned that you got to ask your clients right then and there for feedback when you are with them. So it is important to me to know whether this is useful um, so, so that I can either keep doing them so that I can modify them. Um, I, I need to know, right? Because if this is not useful, then why would I do this? Why would this be strategic? Why would I care? Um, also, not just caring, but like it affects my motivation. Um, sometimes we do things because we are too eager to please others or we're very eager to do a great job and um, and we do the wrong thing. So sometimes because we're too eager, we do the wrong things and then that becomes demoralizing. So we want to be strategic. We want to be knowledgeable. We want to do a little bit of research and a ball ball. We want to stay in communication by obtaining feedback. So thank you, Fernando. You gave me a 10. And the reason, Teresa also a 10. And the reason why I'm asking you this is because I need these, I need these ratings. So, so I want to know, I, I want to hear from everyone who rated me over an eight. Obviously, if you didn't think these were useful, you might be a little bit shy, right? To say one or two or three. But for all of my tens, for all of my tens, I want to know what is your favorite part about this? What exactly about the workshops have been helpful? So Fernando says they have been helpful, um, but I want to know why or how, or what was your favorite part about them? Um, do you like my facilitation style? Do you like my graphics? You like the information? Um, when I see new and info about the tools to make the best work, thank you. I have been able to use awesome. So this is all very important to me because that's how we'll know feedback sometimes. Um, sometimes I'll get emails that say, thank you very much. This was great. Um, like you're all saying, very well, very good messages, very good presentation. So anytime that someone says thank you, that is an opportunity. This was great. That is, that is a sign that it's positive feedback, right? If it's a sad face on Facebook, <laughs> that's obviously either they're sad or they didn't like your post. But seeing words like, thank you, this was great, or oh my gosh, like I can use these tools now, that is feedback. So you need to be paying attention to that and using that. So when you tell me, thank you, this was very useful, I'm going to say, thank you, everybody. I'm glad I, I was able to help. Um, Isabel, can I ask you a favor? Would you mind giving me a recommendation on LinkedIn? And so this is a very specific to my career, but for any of you who are on my LinkedIn profile, please feel free to give me a recommendation. And this is, I'm actually asking you to, this is not part of the presentation, but it is part of the presentation. It's an example of how you can do it. So for all my tens, for all of you that really like these workshops, please write me a recommendation on LinkedIn, if you use LinkedIn. You don't use LinkedIn? Well, how about a Gmail? Do you have a Gmail account, like a Gmail email? Do you have a Gmail email and do you use Google Maps? So if someone says, thank you so much, this was great, this is what you would say. I'm glad I was able to, to help. Can I ask you a favor? Would you write writing me a recommendation? And then they'll say, yes, yeah, sure, I will, I love it. Then you can say, well, do you have a Gmail or do you have a Google map? Or you can also say, do you have a LinkedIn account? Do you use Facebook? So focus on whatever platform your organization uses. And if you don't have a form of reviews, if you focus heavily on Facebook, please use Facebook. So you can say, do you have a Facebook account? Do you use Facebook? Um, if you don't have Facebook or any of those, then the Google Maps, I would say, would be the default. So you do want to ask. You do want to ask specifically people. And, and the reason why I'm going through this is because this is how um, I didn't want to write a whole script, but I wanted to give you conversation examples of how you can ask. So again, what was your favorite part? Thank you so much. 
I'm glad I was able to help. So this is all putting it together. So the customer or the client says, thank you so much. I'm glad I was able to help. And let me pause a little bit right there because as some of you are working over the phone, making phone calls, this might be a way to also add um, the question. If someone is just like, oh my gosh, thank you so much, then you can say, you know what? Yeah, thank you very much. Do you think you'll write me a review? And you have to be very careful too about who, who you ask because sometimes they may not have the digital capacity. So can I ask you a favor? Um, so for those of you that said I did a 10, um, I want to know if you use Google Maps. Do you use Google Maps? So how many of you use Google Maps? So for those of you that um, rated me a 10, an 8, a 9, nobody rated me badly, obviously. But um, for all of you, I want you to go on your phone right now, on your Google phone or your, your, tel your cell phone, I want you to go online and I want you to open Google Maps right now. Would you mind that? Would you mind going to Google Maps right now and write me a positive review? So this is actual questions that you're asking. Now, it doesn't have to be specifically like this, right? You don't have to say Google review. You don't have to say right now, but this is what works for me. And this is what we were working with um, a lot with uh, different businesses. Um, often it was online, often it was via text. We were asking people to go uh, to Google Maps via text, via text. And oftentimes via text, it's, it is easy to send the link of your organization or your program or your business. So for those of you that have your phone right now, if you can go to your Google application, your Google Maps application, only if you use it. And I would like for you to write me a, a review if it's not um, inconvenient for you. So on your phone, you can open the Google Map application. In the search box, you type in Naleo Educational Fund. Then you scroll to the bottom. You scroll to the bottom where you have the reviews. And in there, you can write me a review. Great, so basically what I just went through is a little exercise or a little demonstration of how I would ask um, someone for a review. Now, so an interesting happened um, as I was talking about this, as I was talking, um, I was actually talking with Roberto Garcia um, from the U.S. Census Bureau, and we were talking about the February 17th Train the Trainer, the, the Naleo Educational Fund Train the Trainer in National City that we help. Um, and we were talking about in conversation, and he said, oh, you know, the biggest highlight or one of the biggest highlights of this year census education was the National City Train the Trainer. If you were there, I would like to hear what your, your thoughts on that were. But as soon as he said that, I said, I said, wow, really? Like you think the Naleo Educational Fund trained the trainer that we had this past February um, was like the highlight of the year? And he said, yeah, you know, like when do you see a CEO coming down to the community and giving um, and giving the education to the community. Uh, so I thought, wow, you know, you are right. And that's why we love our CEO, Arturo Vargas so much because he is with us with, within the organization. He makes himself available. Malayo Educational Fund, we are a national organization. And as part of the census work and the leadership that we, are, that we have within, within this campaign, our CEO has been going to different states, um, well, before the pandemic, um, to teach about the census, to motivate people, to inspire. Um, and to me, that's just like a great strategy for any CEO um, to have, for any leader to be doing, to be there with the community. It's very easy to tell people what to do, but to actually lead them, to actually coach them, to actually be with them, um, it takes a special kind of leadership. So with that, here is a new picture from Naleo Educational Fund. I don't know if you noticed, 
but the previous picture I showed you had a 4.0 rating and it had six reviews. So in this one, we have a 4.1 rating and now we have seven reviews. So if we had, if we went from six to seven reviews, that means there was one person who wrote a review and we had a 4.0 and now we have a 4.1. Now, seven reviews is totally not significant. You start getting significant, you know, when you get anywhere from like 20 to 30 to 40 to 50, et cetera, or hundreds. You see some, some of the restaurants, they have like 336 reviews and everybody says this food is great. Let's go eat there. Um, so originally, if you notice, we went from one picture and now with this new review, we have more pictures. So I don't know if you can tell who all these people are, but these are the pictures from the February 17th um, train the trainer that we had in National City. So I know a lot of you that have joined us in the chat today are featured in this picture. But this is to highlight the opportunity that I took. When Roberto Garcia was telling me, you know, like this was just the highlight, I could not believe it. I said, really? Like, I just thought I was doing another train the trainer. I've done like two to three or four. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing a good job. I don't know if I'm doing a bad job. I'm just going and going and doing it. And so that's where we want to get at. We want to know how successful we are being. Um, and so now, if you look online, there are three more pictures. And this first picture that under Naleo, it wasn't too bad, right? But just think about how does it make you feel now that you are seeing these other pictures? Does that build more trustworthiness? Do you feel more comfortable? Does it look like we are walking the talk? That's basically where we're going to. Are we presenting what we are about? Now, here is the actual uh, review that I gathered, um, and I just loved it. So it said, and, and, and I took this opportunity as well two weeks ago uh, when Roberto and I were talking about this specifically to demonstrate demonstrate this to you and prove to you how it can make a difference. Um, so the highlight of this year was seeing CEO Arturo Vargas give a direct training to community members. Naleo Educational Fund had good food, we had certificates and giveaways. More important, the workshop was energizing and people learn about the importance of the 2020 census, organizing for political power and social justice. So this is also content marketing. You're not posting all of this, somebody else is posting it for you. See, yes, so a lot of you are in this picture. And so as of today, May 21st, 2020, this is the new online reputation where we went from one picture to more than one picture. We went from a 4.0 rating to a 4.1 rating, and we went from six reviews to seven reviews. So I just wanna show this as a demonstration of what you can do online, and again, this doesn't have to be Google, right? This can be Facebook, this can be LinkedIn, whatever your primary source of, of uh, information is or your social media, that's, that's where you wanna use. I just use Google because I, I like their products and I like um, the way it works. Um, also importantly, um, and you can check this out, um, we're almost out of time, but I, I have a few more slides left. Uh, most importantly, um, this also ranks your organization. So if I'm searching for an organization that can help me with whatever it is that your service is, and I search for it on the Google Maps, based on your reviews, based on that online reputation, is how you're gonna come up um, on those reviews. So um, let's say, for example, if you're an organization that offers citizenship assistance, and then there's a, a competing organization, and you don't come up, um, in line higher than the other organizations, um, 
that client that is looking for help might go to the other organization. So this is also as a way <clears throat> to stay competitive within or other organization, get new clients, get new leads. And so as digital toolkits and resources, uh, here are the, um, here you have the different Naleo digital toolkit for outreach. And then here at the bottom on the third bullet point is the Naleo 2018 research and messaging that you can follow if you wanna look more into more into detail about methodology. Um, and so just to let you know, um, our next upcoming workshop is videography and editing. Um, I will send a flyer later with, with the titles of the June workshop. For June, we will be focusing more on data and we will be focusing more on the census operations. Um, but also if you have any, any, any uh, questions, you can always call our Naleo hotline at 877-EL-CENSO. And so for now, uh, and so for now, yes, Susanna or Agone, you can't see the pictures. And so I will be sending you all your um, all these slides so that you can see them. But um, this is this is now the time. If you have any questions, this this wraps up the presentation. Uh, so if you really liked what you found um, useful in this workshop, uh, you can always email me. Um, I can do a one-on-one -on -one coaching and lead you and give you more advice. Um, obviously, this one hour does not leave enough time um, to, um, to go into details about your organization, et cetera. Um, but if there are any questions, um, right now um, is the time to ask. So um, please feel free to also put them in the chat box. And again, this concludes our presentation. Thank you so much for uh, being here with us, especially for those of you who have been here every single Thursday. Um, greatly appreciate it. So any questions? So I wanna touch upon Iris who said the census ACOs can be put on Yelp as some um, were previously on it for the 2010. Thank you, Iris, for that. Um, so yeah, you know, and this is, and people are gonna look at you. Um, and they're also, this could also be if people are looking to work for you, they're gonna look at that. So Fernando, um, you are on mute, but you can go ahead and unmute yourself. Hello, everybody. Uh, my question is, what is the best, the best way for find the tracks for the real number for low response? What is the best way to find the tracks for the real number of self-response? So one of the ways, my favorite way, there are many different ways to be fair. Um, here in San Diego, Sandag um, made a map to help us. So Sandag has a map, the state of California has a map, so that's already two maps. Then the Census Bureau has the Rome. That doesn't, I believe that's only a prediction. I don't think it has accurate, um, accurate uh, information. Um, but then we have the census hard account map. So yes, I will put it in the chat box, but let me show you real quick how you can go and uh, find the most accurate. Um, and if you need to jump off, feel free to do it. So I'll go ahead and do it. And I'm gonna do a little demonstration. Um, if you all can see my screen, I already have it bookmarked because I use it so much. But um, Roberto will help me with the link on the chat box. But here we have the, um, the map. This is basically the HTC hard account census maps. And the URL is the www.censushardaccountmaps2020.us. Um, so here you have, and you know what? We also have a recording. The Leo Educational Fund has a recording where we go through some of the features. So I will make sure that I sent you that recording as the follow-up email. Um, so here we have different census response. We have where you can look by state, county, city, localities, etc. Then we also have at the top right-hand corner, we also have um, you can search by address, zip code, county, et cetera. So if you have a specific address that you want to put in, um, like to see what's going on in your neighborhood, you can do it in here. Um, here too, we also have a key of map features. So the map features go over the self-response rate by 2020 um, in different colors. So you can see that the blue means 
um, were about 50% self-respond and anything with warm color means that we are below the 50% mark. Um, you also have other buttons here if you can see that you can click on and off um, depending on what you want. So I would recommend just go in and click on it, you know, so that you feel comfortable using it. Just click, click, click. And, and you also have more map features. So the more map features um, give you different, like other different features like self-response rate. So the initial contact, undercount risk for young children, congressional districts, um, just more, more details. Um, so for this specific case, I'm going to turn off the self-response rate. So now you can see my map is white. Um, you can see my map is white because I haven't selected any. And I'm going to select what I was talking about earlier, that you can click on the bottom 20 self-response rate. So you have to scroll, at, um, you have to scroll all, all the way down. So the bottom 20% of self-response rate across the nation. So here you're starting to see that different areas, and these are by states. Um, this is by state. So you will start seeing the different areas turn purple. I am going to zoom in, see if this lets me um, to California. And I'm going to go here where it says show information at the top left-hand corner. It says show information. And I'm going to go by tract because my state is going to give me information in regards to all of the state. My county is also going to give me information in regards to my county. So I'm going to choose by census tract. So once you select by tract, that's where you can find the response rate. These are, I want to say right now, it is up to date as of 520. I've noticed that they get updates sometime around um, lunchtime, so somewhere around 1. We usually have the data for the next day. Um, so here in San Diego, you can see the bottom uh, 20%. And sometimes um, some of these are because they are update leave, so they haven't received some of these areas have not received the census information. Um, because of the virus, I'm not going to worry too much about that because these areas are not as dense in population. So even though it looks like, oh my gosh, look at this area, it's half of the county that hasn't been counted, that's not necessarily true. Because like, but like I showed you, there can be um, huge uh, population density within just a few tracks. So don't think about too much about the area. Um, you do have to look at the population um, and the census. This website, this website will give you, if you scroll down, it will give you also the population of those census tracts. Um, so here I'm just zooming in um, so that you can see where. So here, this is specifically for San Diego. Um, these are some of the areas where it's at the bottom of the nation. Up here by, by Grantville is San Diego State. So I'm going to think that might be group porters here also too. We have um, different schools. So I'm not going to worry about too much. So what I did notice was this down here by National City. And if you look closer, these are the original maps I showed. They're just a different color. But again, this is where Grant Hill is, Logan Heights, et cetera. The maps I did show you had the um, population of over 80% Hispanic. Um, some of these tracks next to it don't have a large population of Hispanic, um, which is why that's not my priority. But if these are work, uh, if these are groups that you work for or with, um, then you might want to consider it. Yeah. So in Escondido, we actually don't have too many that are um, hard to count. Surprisingly, there's only about one or two um census tracks but now if i want to remove the bottom 20 percent and i just want to do self-respond by tract then it turns to you know my different color then it's like the blue and the yellow so you can kind of start seeing already the discrepancies um within color in terms of the county where we are at so if i keep moving forward more up north um, I see a little yellow. I'm assuming this is also university housing. Some of these areas up north, they are actually update leave. So that's why there are more brown. Um, but there are no people of color there. Or maybe there are very little. 
I don't know. Let's actually take a look. So I'm going to click on it. And here, um, once you click on the census tracts, it highlights it in red. Um, and so here is telling me that only 12% of the population has responded. Um, and about as of most recently, um, the mail and phone has been 0.1 and the internet has been 11.9. So 11.9, that's actually close to 12%. So I think this means maybe one person called or a limited number of person called and then all the other people who have responded it's because they've done it online. Um, so also like for me, if I wanted to see is this, is this area, is Rancho Santa Fe an area of concern of mine? It might not be for me, but it might be for other communities or also for the Census Bureau. Um, so I wanna say risk uh, populations that may be undercounted. So when I go to populations, cause I wanna see the people of color there. Um, so here in the people of color, it tells me that only 14% are Hispanic, 4% are Asian, and 1% is American Indian. Um, so because this is not a Hispanic dense track, this is not a priority of mine. So this is why I didn't show it to you. Also, let's look at low income populations. So in this tract, only 11% of people are in poverty and 4% are in near poverty. So 50% of uh, low income populations, for me, it's not significant when compared to the ones that it had 66%. Um, there's also different features that you can look, like if this is a crowded household, um, this is not a crowded household, only percent is considered household. So there are different um, variables that you can look at. Um, so again, there are more map, more features where you, if you uncheck different boxes, you can see that this area is actually up daily. So I'm actually gonna show it to you. That way you can see it. So the initial census contact. So here are the initial census contacts. And this is what I mean by update leave, that everywhere around it, it's, um, you know, it's purple, meaning that they got the internet choice, but the yellow means it's update leave. So this entire area is update leave. So for now, I can trust that the Census Bureau, hopefully come June or mid-June, they will resume these operations in, this er in these areas. Um, and, and they will, um, at some point, the number should go up. Um, so, and again, like I said, this is not one of my um, priorities. So I'm gonna go back now to the self-response rate by track, and I'm gonna keep going up more. Uh, we see San Marcos. So if you can see, as you can see, everything is almost mostly blue. So the darker the blue, that means the higher response rate. Unfortunately, also, the blue means that there are higher income people there. Um, a lot of the blue right now are more affluent communities. And again, don't pay attention to too many of the, of the yellows uh, because some of those are update leave. Um, so don't worry too much. However, here, so Escondido, it's not doing too bad. Um, but then here, if we focus more, on uh, in the North County, we see that everything around these two tiny little tracks is blue except for these ones. And one of the things that are concerning too is that for the blue parts, they keep going up. Any other areas, they keep going up. But these yellow ones, they have at some point plateaued and they're going up very, very, very slowly. Um, and that is why they're still at less than 50%. They are still yellow. They're about to cross the threshold. Um, but these are some of, some of the ideas. Some here, um, some of these are group quarters as well. Um, so you don't have to worry about that either because like I said, that's a different separate operation. And so you do kind of have to, um, you know, determine whether something is, is, is a priority for your organization or not. So again, if, if, um, if, if you need coaching one-on-one, -on -one, 
like I am here for you to help you. We can schedule a meeting and I can make sure that you understand, um, that you understand uh, how to use this map and the features to inform your different strategies. Um, so if, if there are any other questions, um, this concludes our uh, presentation for today. And thank you everybody who stayed on the line.